All right. We're going to get started, and I really want to thank you all for coming here. Um, I know it's incredibly smoky outside, and we just appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we do think the salad and beer bread might help, but we're not sure. Um, but again, we recognize the, um, the adversity of uh, making your way here. My name is Deborah Gonzalez. I'm the Government Affairs Director at PPIC, of the Public Policy Institute of California. And for those of you not familiar, we're a nonpartisan, nonprofit think tank with both offices in San Francisco and Sacramento. For today's presentation, we're going to hear from PPIC researcher Luna Lopez, who will present the finding of PPIC's latest statewide survey on Californians and higher education. We'd like to thank the College Future Foundation for their support of this particular survey. We'd also like to thank the PPIC Corporate Circle and PPIC Donor Circle for helping to make this event possible, including the lunch provided today. And at registration, you have, should have received a document that contains some key findings from this survey. The full survey report, along with cross tabs and time trends for adults and likely voters, will uh, as well as the slides from today's presentation are also available online at ppic.org. After Luna's presentation, we'll have plenty of time for audience questions and answers. Um, we do have, we are recording this, so please wait for the microphones before you ask your questions. A few things before we begin. As a perfect follow-up to today's briefing of the survey, we, will, we hope you'll join us tomorrow, uh, most likely online, for a conversation between PPIC President and Survey Director Mark Baldassari and College Future Foundation President Monica Lozano about the survey results and the implications for how the next governor can, ac can expand access, improve outcomes, and manage finances for the state's colleges and universities to benefit all California residents. This event will take place in San Francisco, but it will be live webcast beginning at 9 a.m. Full event information may be found on our website. Later today, you will also receive a survey. Our survey team loves surveys. So please fill that out. It's really important to us. We actually um, do look at that. And please turn off uh, your cell phones. Our higher education survey is an annual survey, so you can track questions over time. However, this year, the survey has some new questions. I'm not sure if it's because there is a new governor, but it might be. And I, it explores the role higher education plays in the public's mind, both for the overall state economy and for their own children. It also asks whether funding for higher education should be a priority for the legislature and Governor-elect Newsom. This might seem like a crazy question to other states. California spends $16 billion on higher education, which most states would find an incredibly high amount. But it's important to note that the overall share of the state's general fund for higher education has declined from 18% in 1976-77 to 11.7% in the 2018-19 budget. Um, I'm going to channel a little of I'm going to channel a little of Governor Brown here. And while yesterday uh, the LAO came out with some really impressive numbers, we do know what goes up sometimes comes down in California state budget. And in the past, the legislature had some difficult choices to make and the balancer was sometimes higher education. So we hope the survey will help inform those decisions as we move forward. I don't want to end on a gloomy note. I, I, sometimes I'm known to be a little gloomy, so, but I wanted to end on a high note. There's a lot of bipartisan agreement on the importance of higher education in their survey, and I hope that you will enjoy looking at it as much as I did. So now I'd like to invite to the podium PPIC Research Associate Luna Lopez. Thank you, Deborah, and thank you all for coming. Um, so let's kind of get started here. So I uh, just want to give a quick intro uh, to the statewide survey for those who uh, may not be familiar. Um, the goal of the PBIC statewide survey is to provide timely, relevant, and nonpartisan uh, information on political and social and economic um, opinions of Californians across the state. Our goal is to improve and inform state policymaking and raise awareness uh, and encourage discussion by representing the, the opinions of Californians. And since 1998, we've uh, interviewed uh, over 350,000 Californians and have conducted over 170 uh, surveys. 
So this survey on Californians in higher education uh, is an annual survey, as Deborah mentioned. Uh, we originally uh, launched it in 2007, and it ran from 2007 to 2011. Uh, during 2011, you know, we uh, kind of took a pause there, middle of recession, things like that, and we restarted recently in 2016 after uh, the launch of the PPIC Higher Education Center. This survey that I'll be covering today we, was conducted before the election. Uh, the dates, the fielding dates were October 27th through November 5th. And 70% of the interviews were conducted via cell phone, 30% on landline. We interviewed 1,703 adults. Uh, this includes uh, 1,095 likely voters. And the two kind of, th so this presentation is broken up into two sections. The first uh, will cover, you know, kind of more at perceptions and attitudes towards higher education. And so we'll cover, you know, the view of uh, the importance of higher education and its priority for the next governor. We look at some problems uh, that people, you know, have in terms of concerns uh, facing higher education. And we also look at the ratings of the systems and approval ratings for the governor and the legislature. And then in the second uh, section, we turn a bit more to, towards uh, questions that deal with some policy preferences. So we look at uh, funding, you know, perceptions on funding levels and how people feel about some potential revenue sources for uh, higher education, and also so, touch upon the issues of uh, student affordability and equity. So starting here with the perception and attitude section, um, you know, this was fielded right before the, uh, the election. In fact, we got our data back on election day, so that gave us something to keep our mind off of the returns. Um, so we, um, we asked, you know, thinking about higher education, um, how much of a priority should uh, this issue be for the next governor? And uh, we found that more than six in 10 across parties and more than two in three across regions and uh, age and education and income groups and racial and ethnic groups said that the state's uh, public higher education system should be a high or a very high priority. Notably, as you can see on this chart, residents in the Inland Empire were the most likely to say uh, higher education should be a very high priority for the next governor. So next, we asked some questions about the direction of the state's higher education system. And today, about half of Californians and four in 10 likely voters think the public higher education system in California is generally going in the right direction. Uh, across parties, just over half of Democrats uh, think things are going in the right direction, compared to only 39% of independents and just 19% of Republicans who think that the state's uh, higher education system is you know, going in the right direction. And again, regionally, uh, the Inland Empire here stands out with residents be, you know, there being the least likely to say that the state's higher education system is headed in the right direction. So keeping in mind that you know, less than half of Californians think that the higher education system is going in the right direction, we ask, you know, when it comes to, to the higher ed system in the state, would you rather see the next governor continue Jerry Brown's policies or mostly change to different policies? And we found that just over half of Californians and likely voters want a change to different policies, uh, while only a third uh, want to continue uh, Jerry Brown's policies when it comes to higher education. Across racial ethnic groups, uh, Latinos and whites were the most likely to say that they would like to see the next governor change to different policies. And uh, across parties, an overwhelming majority of Republicans, so 84% of Republicans, and a majority of independents uh, said that they wanted to see a change to different policies. Yet, I think what we found really notable was that even among Democrats, uh, there appears to be some appetite for change, uh, with just 44% saying that the, governor, the next governor should continue Jerry Brown's policies, and 37% of Democrats saying that they would like to see a change to new policies when it comes to higher education. So, Next, we kind of asked some questions about the importance of higher education. And so here, first I'm gonna cover uh, this question that we looked at that looks at you know, how important is California's higher education system to the quality of life and economic vitality of the state for the next uh, 20 years. And this is something we've been tracking. Uh, we've been tracking this question over time. Today, we find that three in four adults and likely voters think that California's higher education system is very important uh, to the quality of life and economic vitality of the state. More than seven in 10 adults and likely voters have said that the state's higher education system is very important in 12 surveys that we've asked uh, dating back to 2007. 
So you know, Californians have consistently felt that higher education is really important uh, for the state moving forward. And uh, across racial and ethnic groups, as we can see here, uh, more than seven in 10 say higher ed is very important uh, for the state, uh, with Latinos uh, and African Americans you know, particularly likely to say uh, it's very important. We also found that uh, here there's a kind of bipartisan agreement here with uh, Demo majorities of Democrats, Republicans, and independents, all you know, saying that they think higher ed is very important for the state. So we not only asked about importance of higher education for the state broadly, we also asked uh, you know, about the importance of a four-year degree for individuals uh, and their s individual success in today's economy. So here we see that um, when asked about the importance of having a four-year degree uh, for economic and financial success in today's economy, a majority of adults and likely voters say it is very important. Latinos and Asian Americans are more likely than African Americans and whites to say that it is very important. And uh, across parties, uh, there was a bit more of a difference here when, uh, when we compare it to the question about the importance of it for the state. So 60% of Democrats said it's very important compared to 48% of independents and 36% of Republicans. So there's also uh, another question that we asked that kind of touches upon this and something, this is, this is a new question, question that we've asked previously and we asked again this year, asked whether college is necessary for uh, success or if there's um, many ways to succeed in today's work world. And when we ask it that way, we see that it's 49% uh, say, uh, adults say that there's many ways to succeed and 49% say that college is necessary. And there are some differences there by parties with Democrats more likely to say that it's necessary than Republicans. <coughs> so next we asked about some concerns Californians may have when it comes to the state's higher education systems. We asked uh, how big of a problem is the quality of education, uh, the affordability of education, and the enrollment capacity in California's public higher education system. We found that relatively few Californians uh, say that quality or enrollment capacity are a big problem. However, 58% say affordability is a big problem when facing higher, uh, big problem facing higher education in California today. And this is something that we've seen um, repeatedly dating back uh, that Californians have consistently, majorities have consistently identified affordability as a big problem uh, for the state's higher education system. So despite the you know, concerns about affordability, um, South Island majorities of Californians uh, give excellent or good ratings to the three branches of California's public higher education system. More than six in 10 give each of the systems a rating of excellent or good, while fewer than one in four rate the community colleges, the CSU, or the UC systems as doing uh, not so good or a poor job. Uh, among those who have attended a California community college, 71% said that the co community college system does an excellent or good job. And among those who attended a CSU school, 72% uh, rate the system as doing an excellent or good job. And among uh, those who attended a UC uh, school, they're particularly uh, kind of uh, positive towards the system with 82% saying it does an excellent or good job. And finally, in the section, we get to um, approval ratings of the governor and the legislature. So today, about half of Californians uh, and likely voters approve of the way that Jerry Brown is handling his job as governor. Um, it's a little bit lower when we ask about how he's handling uh, the state's public higher education system. And this is uh, particularly interesting to keep in mind given the results that we covered about whether people want the next governor to continue his policies when it comes to higher ed or change to new policies. And we found similar uh, levels of support uh, on both of those questions uh, for Jerry Brown last year. Um, this, and then turning to the California legislature, we right now 46% of Californians say that they're doing, uh, approve of the job they're doing overall. It's a little bit lower there for um, how they're handling public higher education system. And again, this is in line with what we found last year when we uh, asked approval ratings um, overall and on the higher education system. So next we're gonna kind of switch to um, discussing some policy preference questions that we asked. And some of the topics that we're gonna cover here include levels of funding, uh, revenue sources, and affordability for students. So to get right into it, um, so this is a question we again have been tracking. 
And first we asked about the levels of state spending for the state's public higher education system. And as we see, majorities of adults and also of likely voters say that the current level of state spending for California's public colleges and universities is not enough. Uh, majorities across racial and ethnic groups at the current level is not enough. And uh, there are some partisan differences here with 71% of Democrats uh, saying that it's not enough uh, compared to 53% independents and 35% of Republicans who say that the current level of uh, state spending for higher education is not enough. So next we asked about uh, tying additional uh, state funding for California's public colleges and universities to student outcomes such as graduation rates. And uh, we actually found you know, a pretty solid amount of support. 64% of adults favor uh, tying additional state funding to student outcomes. And however, we have a pretty uh, sh you know, kind of partisan difference here. 68% of Democrats are in favor and 66% of independents. Um, however, Republicans are more divided. 45% are in favor and 48% uh, oppose uh, tying additional state funding to student outcomes such as uh, graduation rates. Next, uh, we asked, um, well, as most of you may know, <laughs> Proposition 98 guarantees a minimum level of state funding for K-12 schools and uh, the community college system. And we wanted to ask Californians um, how they would feel about establishing a minimum level of uh, state spending for the CSU and the U system, uh, the UC systems. Uh, and we found that there's you know, pretty solid level of uh, support for this idea. 63% of adults uh, think that it's a good idea. 61% of likely voters think that guaranteeing a minimum level of state funding for the CSU and UC systems would be a good idea. And uh, while there are some partisan differences, even a you know, slight majority of Republicans are also in favor of this idea. Uh, with 51% of Republicans, 73% uh, of Democrats, and 65% of independents uh, thinking that it would be a good idea to set up a guaranteed minimum level of state spending for the uh, CSU and UC systems. We also found that majorities across all regions, uh, age groups, education and income groups, and uh, race and ethnic groups were in favor uh, or thought that this would be a good idea. So next we asked some questions about some possible revenue sources for higher education. Um, there's a possible uh, initiative that might, may be on the 2020 ballot that would change how commercial properties are taxed uh, and assessed under Prop 13, and it would direct some of the revenue um, to uh, K through 12 funding and for local governments. So we asked Californians how they would feel about the proposal if instead of directing uh, money to K to 12 and local governments, it directed some of those additional uh, revenue sor uh, sources to higher education. And we found majorities of adults, 58% uh, of adults and 56% of likely voters say that they would support it. Um, regionally, support was uh, high, you know, ranged from a high of 66% in the San Francisco Bay Area to a low of 50% in Orange and San Diego. So notably, we, um, we found that support among likely voters is at 56%. And um, for comparison, in our January survey, we asked a similar question about the split role kind of property tax change uh, without mentioning um, any, you know, where the, the additional resources would go, uh, revenue would go. And when we asked it that way in January, 46% uh, of likely voters uh, were in favor of a split role um, change to the property tax system. And in April, we asked the question um, similarly, but with the money going to K through 12, and we found that 53% of likely voters would, yeah, in April supported um, a split role with additional uh, revenue going to K through 12. So next, we asked about a potential state bond measure for higher education construction projects. And uh, we find that two in three Californians and a majority of uh, likely voters are in favor. And support among all adults for a uh, higher uh, bond for construction projects in higher ed is at its highest point since we first began asking this question in 2007. Uh, regionally, support for this proposal is highest in the Inland Empire. So there's a few questions where we've noticed the Inland Empire stand out uh, you know, compared to other regions in the state. And uh, we also found that majorities across race and ethnic groups, age, education, and income groups say that they would vote yes on a state bond measure 
for uh, higher education construction projects. So next we looked at the perception and opportunity disparities uh, for a college education. Um, when it comes to opportunities to get a college education, half of Californians think that qualified students from low income families, regardless of their ethnic or racial background, um, have less opportunity than others. We found that one in three adults say that they have uh, about the same uh, level of opportunity and one in 10 say they have uh, more opportunity than others. And uh, notably, majorities across income groups say that low-income students have less opportunity um, when it comes to uh, obtaining a college education. So then we asked the same question, but instead about uh, focusing on low-income students, we asked about students who are racial um, and ethnic minorities. And here we find that Californians are a bit more divided. 40% believe that these students have less opportunity, while a similar proportion, 42%, uh, think that they have about the same level of opportunity. And 15% say that they um, have more opportunity. And uh, there's really some notable differences across parties with, um, you know, 60% of uh, Democrats say that qualified minority students have less opportunity compared to only 40% of independents and just 12% of Republicans who say that qualified uh, minority students have uh, less opportunity. So next we asked some questions that look at affordability issues for students. And um, as I think we, we, we're all aware here in California, the housing costs and this overall cost of living is among the highest in the nation. So um, we, and PPIC research has noted that the median monthly housing costs for homeowners with a mortgage is about 47% higher here in California and uh, that renters pay about 40% more than the nationwide median for rent. So we wanted to know if Californians think that tuition and fees or if housing uh, and living expenses are the biggest financial burden for California's college students. And uh, we see that plurality of Californians named tuition and fees as the bigger burden, while 34% say housing and living expenses. 17% uh, volunteer that both are about an equal burden uh, on students. And uh, again, this is interesting to keep in mind given the, you know, those concern questions that we covered earlier where you have 58% of Californians who say that affordability is a, a big problem facing the state's higher education system today. Um, so notably here, um, you'll see that the San Francisco Bay Area is the only uh, region where um, residents there were more likely to say housing and living expenses uh, is a bigger financial burden than tuition and fees. So. So next we asked about concerns about uh, student debt level. We asked how concerned are you about students who attend the state's public colleges and universities taking on too much debt to pay for tuition and living expenses. And we see that six in 10 Californians are very concerned about college students taking on too much debt. Uh, research from PPIC's Higher Education Center showed that in 2016, 40% of UC freshmen and 38% of CSU freshmen took out student loans. So that just gives some perspective that um, there's a, a you know, big uh, percentage here of adults who are concerned about it, but you know, less than half of uh, incoming freshmen in the UC and CSU systems uh, are taking out loans. And um, there's widespread concern about student debt. Uh, so we found that ma majorities across age, uh, income, education, and racial ethnic groups uh, say that they're very concerned about California's college students taking on too much debt. We also found that six in 10 uh, adults think that there's not enough uh, current government funding for scholarships and grants for students who need financial help to attend the state's public colleges and universities. 22% uh, say there's just enough uh, funding and 10% say that there's more than enough. And here there's a striking uh, partisan difference. 71, 75% uh, of Democrats say that there's not enough uh, government funding for scholarships compared to only 35% of uh, Republicans. Next, we asked some questions uh, that look at uh, kind of the role of the university in helping students succeed. So we asked, you know, which is following, uh, which of the following is closer to your point of view uh, when it comes to student success? That is the student solely responsible or the university needs to assist in the success of his students? And we found that six in 10 uh, Californians say that the university needs to assist. And again, here we see a partisan difference. Um, 
73% of Democrats say that the university has a role in um, you know, ensuring the success of its students, uh, whereas Republicans are more divided. 45% say the student is solely responsible, and 44% say that the uh, university needs to assist. And this is actually a national question that was asked by the New America Foundation last year, and they found kind of similar levels of uh, kind of agreement here with majorities in their survey also saying that, and that was a nationwide survey of adults, saying that the university has a role to play in ensuring the success of its students. So next we wanted to ask specifically about the California's public colleges and universities and whether um, Californians think that they are providing enough academic support and course planning to help the students successfully complete their degrees on time. And here we see that 57% of adults um, say that Cal uh, the California's colleges and universities are providing enough academic support and course planning to help students. And here the, we see the breakout that among those who attended California community colleges, CSU, and UC, majorities of those who attended uh, those systems say that California's public colleges and universities are indeed providing enough academic support. Next we asked about um, some changes and proposals uh, to the California community college system. Um, we asked about the, uh, you know, this was uh, one of the platforms for uh, Governor-elect Newsom's campaign where, you know, he kind of uh, promised the idea of making two free years of community college tuition. So we asked Californians how they feel about, you know, the state guaranteeing two free years of tuition at California's community colleges. And we see 80% uh, of Californians uh, support that idea. It's really an overwhelming level of support among Democrats and among independents. And among Republicans, it's a bit more divided, but um, you know, taking the state as a whole, uh, eight in 10 Californians uh, support this idea. So there's a really, it's, there's few kind of uh, policies where you really get to that, that level of support. So this is something that we found pretty striking. And um, we also asked about the expansion of online certificates and degree programs at California's community colleges. And here's something that um, across parties people agree on. So uh, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, so more than uh, seven in 10 across all of those poli the political parties there, uh, think that that's a good thing uh, for students at California's community colleges. So next we asked about um, admission preferences for local students. We asked uh, if California's public colleges and universities should uh, give priority when making admissions decisions to local students from their region of the state. And again, uh, here is something that we found uh, support across parties uh, and really high level support um, across the state, looking at all regions, uh, more than seven in 10 favor the idea of um, colleges and universities in the state giving uh, admission preferences to local students from that region. Finally, uh, we asked about if, you know, even uh, Deborah just kind of framed that the LAO recently um, said that the state budget's looking pretty rosy uh, for a, pic a picture right now. And uh, we asked if the state had uh, additional money, uh, state funding for California's public colleges and universities, how would uh, Californians prefer to use that extra money? Would they prefer to increase uh, resources to help current students um, obtain their degree on time? Or would they um, like to see that money go towards increasing enrollment capacity so that more students can attend? And here we found that a slight majority, 52% of adults, uh, would like to see that money go to help to, for resources to help current students. And 38% would like to see it increase uh, enrollment capacity so that more students can attend. Um, African Americans were particularly more likely to say that they want to see the uh, money for additional resources for current students, uh, whereas Latinos are a little bit more divided there. And finally, just uh, kind of wrapping up some of the key takeaways we had from the survey. So we see that Californians uh, really see higher education as important for financial success uh, for the state and for individuals. And they, given that you know, importance that they place on this, they see uh, the higher education as a high priority for the next governor. And most Californians uh, want Governor-elect Newsom to change to new policies when it comes to higher education with fewer than half saying that the system right now is headed in the right direction. Um, 
We also see that California's three systems, and we've seen this kind of consistently over the last few years, uh, receive positive ratings, and very few Californians, uh, really only 20% see quality of education as a problem in uh, California's higher education system. However, when it comes to affordability, that's something that the public is concerned about, and uh, you can see that with you know a lot of them saying that there's just not adequate level of funding for um, scholarships and grants for students who need it. And uh, given that you know there's a, a, a lack of concern about affordability, and majority of Californians saying that um, state funding levels are not enough, um, majorities of Californians are you know supportive of a split role property tax that would fund higher education. And uh, we also see majority support for a guaranteed minimum level of state spending um, for the CSU and the UC systems. And with that, I'll take any questions you guys may have. This kind of in regards to the split role question, sort of, because um, mm -hmm. I saw you, you mentioned what happened in the April survey and January survey. My question is, I don't know if you've asked a revenue question for higher ed separate from split role. I don't know and that, how that compares, if a, a different revenue source. I don't know if it's a similar result when you asked. I don't know. Yeah, so we asked, uh, last year we asked about raising tuition uh, and everybody was against that. Um, we also have previously asked about uh, pay, paying more taxes for that uh, purpose and also um, uh, allowing more out-of-state students. So um, there's kind of more, um, it's a bit more split on the, especially the out-of-state students. Um, so that's kind of a, 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 you know, an issue there. But when it comes to raising tuition as an additional revenue source, uh, from what we asked last year, people, I mean, there's widespread, you know, kind of uh, disagreement there. Nobody wants to do that, so. Any other questions? Let's stand up front here. I'm just wondering in piecing together kind of many of the responses, it seems like the public is not concerned about, they didn't seem particularly concerned about having more enrollment. Um, and overall, they support the quality of, of higher ed, but they do want more funding. So do you think, and the biggest concern is affordability, do you think what they really want is more financial aid as opposed to more funding for, say, the UC and CSU systems? Right, so um, when we look, when we ask that question about, you know, is there enough funding for uh, scholarships and grants, you see that, you know, I think it's over 60% say that there's not. So there's definitely, a, it appears at least to be an appetite for, for that. But, um, you know, I think when it comes to funding, there's a lot of sticker shock, right, that people have. Um, and there's a lot, of, there could be a lot of conflation, just you, you hear about the costs of college and people might not be aware of the resources that are available to them. So, but we really didn't get too kind of, you know, looking at, especially, you know, we could ask parents specifically what they're concerned about when it comes to things like that, or students, you know. Um, so I think that, that there's a, a general sense there that's concerned about affordability, because also that gets a lot of media coverage, right? So that's something that, um, it, that's not to say that, if, you know, uh, capacity isn't the problem. It's just that it's not, it doesn't appear to be registering as strongly as affordability with the public, at least based on our data. Um, so on the enrollment piece, mm -hmm. I was wondering, did you give them any sort of like education on mm -hmm. that issue? Because uh, I don't think it's widely known, but right. you know, prior to the recession, if you had the right grades and all that, you would get into a Cal State University, for mm -hmm. example. And now we know that you know thirty thousand plus admissions are being denied based on state funding, right. which I think people don't know. A lot of people don't know. That's obviously impacting those thirty thousand denied admissions. Mm -hmm. But you know, so I'm just. I think you have to like. I feel like they needed context to answer that. Right. Yeah. No. We so we didn't uh, provide any kind of um, you know education. Obviously, if we preface that and then ask them if it's a problem. Then everyone's gonna be like, "Wow, I didn't know," but I guess it's a huge problem, right? So there is that. Um, but I think so. I think what the survey kind of touches upon is that this is an issue, but it's not an issue that people are aware of, right? And so there's kind of researchers and policymakers who may need to kind of you know address that um, if they want to get support for additional uh, resources to kind of widen uh, enrollment, you know, to increase enrollment capacity. So if people don't aren't concerned about it, then it's going to be harder to get that kind of popular support behind it. So. 
I have uh, more of a comment. You mentioned perception and affordability. I think a lot of people's perception is obviously based on the data that California higher education is not that affordable. But I, I'm, I was wondering as I was looking at the results, like if people were given a little bit of education about the average amount of debt that graduates of our public universities uh, graduate with, which I think relatively is um, in the 20,000s compared to a lot of other places or people that go to private universities. I wonder how much the perception about affordability would change if people think that graduating with an average of, I think it was 24,000 when I went to UC Davis, if that's an acceptable amount of debt, right? Mm -hmm. If that's reasonable, um, how much the perception about um, affordability might change if they had that information? Sure, yeah, I think one of the you know, trickier things with uh, this higher education survey is that you have three systems and the students that go to those three systems are very different from each other. The costs of the three systems are different. The, you know, so the pressures, the financial pressures uh, of, of the students in those three systems and of the th systems themselves are different. Um, and so I think that's, you know, we have limited space. Uh, most people don't like to stay on the phone for 20 minutes, so, um, but it's something that we, we are, you know, looking into, um, there's, a, there's a large amount of concern about affordability, so that's already captured, right? Um, and so providing that additional information, um, depending on how you, you know, what information you provide, you can de you, you'll get a different response in terms of, you know, even more concern or maybe less, you know, less in the concern. And um, that's just something for us, we're just looking at the overall perception without that, you know, prime, priming people. Um, sometimes when you give that information, it could, you, you can kind of skew the response that you're going to get. So we just want the, you know, people's impressions, whether they have a lot of knowledge about it or not. So, um, and that's kind of what we're trying to capture with the survey. Hi. Um, difference between the BOG waiver, the one year that right now currently is being offered for first students, to when you say two years, are you specifically saying 60 units mm -hmm. or six, you know? <laughs> so we just, the way we phrased the question was uh, two years of community college tuition, right? So guaranteeing two years of uh, free community college tuition. So this is an issue where we find widespread support for that, and it's a general, this is you know, how uh, uh, Gavin Newsom had it phrased in, in his kind of uh, um, website as this is what I, you know, I support. So when we get into the, the weeds of you know, units and how many un units to a degree, and, and then are those units available for the, you know, and transferable and things like that, so it's just not something that you're gonna get most Californians knowing that much about. So we really have to phrase a question that people who know a lot about higher education can answer, but also those who really have, you know, have never had any interaction with the systems, right? Um, so that's why we go with a really general language. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's like asking about the split rule. It's a little tricky. If we call it the split rule, people may not know what it is. So we have to kind of define exactly, you know, you know, taxing commercial properties at market rate and things like that. So. Um, that it's a general language that everybody can kind of understand, so everybody's answering the same question. Yeah. Hi, out of the folks that were surveyed, um, do we know how many of them either had experience in higher ed or had gotten a degree or credential? Yeah, so we asked um, about uh, if you've attended uh, a, pub a California uh, community college, a CSU or a UC, we had, I think, over 400 uh, Californians who had, I think it might have been over 500, who attended a California community college, um, about 300 who attended a CSU, and over 200 who attended a UC. So, um, you know, we, and we, uh, I really highly recommend you go to our website. We have the data tables uh, broken out by all these demographics, and it includes those who attended uh, each of the systems. And if they say they attended all three, then they get counted in all three, so. Any other questions? Great, thank you all so much for coming.